Welcome to Foley and Sound Effects. When it comes to the creation of Foley and SFX, I break it down into four steps. Step one is to organize and queue all of our Foley and Sound Effects. All this means is we're gonna mark in our timeline where we wanna place the Foley. Now there are three categories to Foley that we're looking for today. Number one is prop sounds, number two is cloth sounds, and number three is footsteps. Step number two is to locate or scour the internet for the sounds that we queued. And then we organize them and import them into our project. Step number three is to sync all of the Foley and sound effects that we've imported into the project with the beats we've queued up. And finally, step number four is to add a dissolve on the beginning and end of each Foley and sound effect clip. When broken down like this, it sounds simple enough, but the hard part is actually doing so. Step one in the SFX process is to cue the Foley. Now, how do we know what sounds to cue up and how do I know what I'm looking for? Well, I've broken Foley down into three categories. The first one is props, the second one is cloth, and the third one is footsteps. Prop sounds are sounds from anything that is movable or portable on screen. So if it's a tangible thing that can physically be moved, I consider it a prop. Cloth sounds are sounds made from any form of fabric like clothes, hats, rugs, drapes, anything of that nature. And the third one is footsteps and that's just exactly that, their footsteps. Wherever our character's feet make contact with the ground, in this case the dirt, there should be some kind of noise resembling a footstep, even if it's so faint you could barely hear it. But those are the three categories of sounds that we're gonna be looking for, and it's exactly how we're gonna organize our timeline. So, back to our project, if we go to Audio Track 3, we're gonna right click here and rename this to Prop Underscore 1, Prop Underscore 2, then on Track 5, we're gonna rename that to Cloth Underscore 1, then we're gonna rename this to Cloth Underscore 2, then Audio Track 7, Footstep Underscore 1, Footstep Underscore 2. We also have our music on Audio Track number 8, and I'm gonna do a Select All and bring it down. I'm actually gonna add a couple more audio layers here, so I'm gonna right click here and click Add Tracks. I'm gonna click here in Audio Tracks. I'm gonna add five more tracks just to give us some room down here, and we're gonna select all this, and we're gonna hold Shift when we drag so we don't lose sync. I'm gonna I'm gonna lock the video layer up here so that way if I accidentally move something, I don't wanna move the whole video layer and I don't wanna move this audio layer down here. So we're actually gonna lock both of those. As we cue our sounds, the sounds will go in their respective tracks. Now we may not have to use every track, but I like to have two tracks just in case I wanna add or take away any more sounds. Now that all of our tracks are labeled, we're gonna rewatch this and find all of our prop sounds in the cut. But I want you to locate where it feels empty, where it feels unclear, where you feel there needs to be some sound. And really the only prop sound we have in this commercial is the car prop, which is towards the end. We don't really have a lot of prop sounds, but there should be a sound here when he takes off. I should be hearing an engine roar. I should be hearing the gas getting hit, the tires screeching on the dirt. So on that stuff I'm saying is gonna be cued into our prop tracks. So go ahead and watch it and have prop sounds in mind. Boom, so the first prop sound is right there. The first prop sound is that we should hear the car tires rolling in the dirt or on gravel or something. So now that we found our first prop sound, what we wanna do is come over here to the project panel. We're gonna right click inside the import window and we're gonna say new item offline file. This window is gonna pop up. We don't really wanna mess with anything there because we really want the audio. And we're going to change the contains to audio only and then hit okay. Your offline file is gonna pop up in your project window. All I want you to do is I want you to click and drag that to your timeline and it's going to be read, that's okay. You're not supposed to hear anything. Now what I like to do is I like to hit Command R. I'm gonna slow that down to like 25%, whatever, whatever makes it really long. I just need it long enough for the cue. So basically all my car sounds start around right here when the car comes into frame and probably a little bit before that, maybe some shadow, probably start at the shadow. So I'm going to move this to the beginning and this red clip is going to be our cue for car sounds. We probably wanna hear car sounds at just general general car sounds up to this point. Car, 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 car. Yep, and I know another distinct car sound because I, I can't tell you what motor I want to hear. I can't tell you all that stuff yet, but I definitely want to hear the car pulling in, maybe the car coming to a stop. So all I'm going to do if I want to label another sound, I'm going to hold option on my keyboard. I'm going to click and drag this and it's going to copy it to another layer. I want to zoom in and then I want to cut that down because it's just a stop. So the sound's not too long, maybe like hitting on the brakes a little bit. And then I wanna hear him take off right there too. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hold option on my keyboard, click and drag again to copy this over. And we wanna hear the engine rev probably around the time he's going to. But right on, so that is an example of cueing your sound. So we have the car sound right here being cued, this one long one. It kind of represents all of the car sounds that are gonna be mixed in with it. Then we have a little bit right here, the car stopping, and then we have, yeah, the car taking off just like that. Now, a lot of people like to use markers up here, which we did in the last one. The thing about using markers up here is that all of your markers are gonna get really congested up there and really ugly, so you're not gonna be able to identify them clearly. By doing it this way, you're able to actually see the sound file before it goes in. 
All right, so let's move on to cloth. Now it's the same concept here. You're gonna cue the cloth sounds on their respective layers. So we have two layers right here. The cloth cues are probably not gonna be as long as the prop cues. There's a lot of different sounds that are gonna go into the creation of the car. So I just put one long one because I don't know what those are yet until I hear them. Let's go ahead and option drag this over and let's get ready to cue our first piece of cloth. So as he's looking down, what I do see is maybe his neck sliding. Can you hear that? Maybe something like that, maybe not that aggressive, but I do wanna hear some kind of slow cloth sound right there. I think that'll be necessary. And if we can't find anything that fits, that's okay. Maybe right there, right as he lifts his foot. The foot again, some armpit up here noises. I don't wanna overlap, so I'm gonna bring it down to cloth two. We definitely don't wanna mix these cloth sounds loud. These are definitely silent, very faint sounds that we're hearing. Now I know right here, we're gonna have a couple sound effects, maybe like a riser or like a crash or something. So a lot of the cloth sounds might not be heard. Here we're gonna queue them up anyway. And that kind of does it for our cloth section. There's really nothing else there. So let's move on to footsteps. So I'm gonna take one of these pieces and drag it onto the footstep layer. Here we go. One, two, three. So he goes into like his first step, then his second step, and then he goes into both two, and then he goes to a third one. Okay, he, so he lifts there. That We, we definitely wanna hear that, the dirt crunch under his feet. So he, he, the lift off, it's more like a foot swipe here instead of a foot step, but it's all part of the feet. Where, wherever his foot makes contact with the ground, and he's down, he's got two bounces, two bounces here. Swipes with the foot. So him getting down into his track stance, we wanna yeah, so he's got a lot of steps here, so I'm just gonna extend this out because by the time we fill those steps in, we could definitely fill in back here when we see it. And again, the music's gonna be blasted. This is the climax, this is the loudest part of the film. I already see it in my head. So a lot of the risers, a lot of the crashes, the booms, everything's gonna build up to this point. So a lot of this stuff's probably not gonna be as prominent in the final mix. And that's footsteps, right on. All right, now that all the Foley is queued up, the very next step is to find the actual sounds to substitute with our offline file. And there's three parts to this. The first step is to create our sound design folder and create a Foley and SFX folder within that folder. Second step is to locate our actual Foley and sound effects files that we're gonna be using and import them into that sound design folder. And the third step is to import all of those files into our actual project and substitute the offline files. So with that said, let's go to our project folder. So all I'm gonna do to hide Premiere, I'm gonna hit Command H and you're gonna see that here is our project folder. If I back out of here, that's Premiere footage. Here's our project folder. Click this settings button and click new folder. You can right click, hit new folder, or you can go up here and hit the settings button and title this sound design. All of our assets are gonna go in this sound design folder. Now I'm gonna go into this folder and then I'm going to create another folder and call this Foley. What goes in this folder are the sounds that we did create ourselves. Then I'm gonna create another folder and I'm going to call this SFX. What goes in this folder are the sounds that we did not create ourselves. All right, so let's find our sounds. I actually provided you guys with some footstep sound effects to use. In the description of this video, there should be a Dropbox link. And in that Dropbox link, you actually have all of my footsteps that were pre-recorded that I am going to give to you for absolutely free. I'm gonna show you how to download them right now. So if you click that link in the description, you should be taken to this folder. You should see a folder that says footsteps inside the footsteps folder. You'll see 10 foot swipe sounds and you'll see like 19 footstep sounds. I did my own fully and own processing on these sounds specifically for this production and they are yours for absolutely free. No need to scour the internet for footstep sounds. I ask that you don't sell these, but you can use these for any commercial work, any personal work, anything like that. Uh, you can sell them. I don't care. So what you want to do is you want to come back to where you see this footsteps folder. You want to hover your mouse over the actual bar. It's going to highlight gray and you want to click more. Under more, you'll see download. You're once you download them, drag and drop them to your desktop. They are in a zip file. On a Mac, all you have to do is double click to unzip them. And here's the folder. If we look in here, we will see all of the footsteps and let's see how they sound. Crispy, crispy, crispy. Nice. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag that footsteps folder into our Foley folder. So if we go into our Foley folder, we'll see the footsteps are right there. So that takes care of our footsteps. Now let's take care of our prop sounds, our car sounds. So the car sounds that I found were actually right here. Now I wasn't able to record car sounds, so I went online and tried to find my own. And here are the five that I found. I found car tire kind of rolling in the gravel, Ford Mustang engine, another Ford Mustang sound, a muscle car exhaust, and a vintage car. All of these that are downloaded are MP3 but that's what I was able to find. So I highly suggest that you go on the internet and you scour all of these free websites and find some car sounds. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag this car sounds folder into my SFX because I didn't record those car sounds myself. They are not considered fully, they are considered SFX. 
All right, so for my cloth sounds, I went to Trying Digital and I purchased the fighting sound effects and inside the Impact's design, is it? They have grabs and they have cloth grabs all up and down. And basically I'm gonna mix some of these together. They are a little aggressive, but I'm only looking for the ends of those sounds. So we're gonna mix in the ends of those sounds and see how it works. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag that fighting SFX into my SFX folder and I'm gonna wait for it to copy over. The next step is to actually import our sound. So I'm going to click and drag my sound design folder into the import window. All right, so everything has been imported. It is time to cut in our sounds and sync them up. So let's see, let's start with props. Let's do, actually, why don't we just start at the beginning of the timeline? Let's start with footsteps. Why not? You can start with anything you want. So I'm gonna go into my sound design. I'm gonna go to footsteps. So I'm just gonna audition all of these sounds, what I like the best. And because they're footsteps, they're pretty much gonna be low. They're probably not gonna be above negative 30 decibels if even close to that. So go ahead, go through, find all of the footsteps that you wanna use and substitute them with all of your offline files. So here we go. Something that also might be very beneficial to you guys as you're designing your scene and syncing up your sounds, you can either mute the music or solo the layers that you're working on. So I'm gonna solo footstep track one and footstep track two and it's gonna be silent except for the footsteps. And that's kind of how I'm gonna go about it. I'm able to isolate just the footsteps and it makes it a lot easier for me to see if they fit, if they match, if the sound actually matches the movement. So I highly recommend that. All right, so as I'm doing this, I'm realizing that when I double click into the project window, it gets rid of all of my assets. And I wanna see the assets at the same time. It'll make the sifting process much smoother. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the source monitor where this thing that pops up every time you double click a sound. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag it until I see this blue thing. And basically it'll put both of them side by side so you can click and hit play at the same time. And then it'll speed up your process. The other thing I'm noticing as I'm going through is that the levels are way off. Like it always sounds a little too loud. So the way I adjust the volume of a single clip is I click it and I hit G and then I hit adjust gain by and then I work in increments of five and 10. So sometimes I'll, if I think it's like, it needs to be a little bit quieter, I'll do negative five. If it needs to be a lot quieter, I'll do negative 10. If it needs to be a little bit louder, I'll do positive five. And if it needs to be a lot louder, I'll do positive 10 and I'll hit enter and the clip will adjust as so. So as you're going through, don't be afraid to adjust the volume of a clip by clicking it and hitting G. We are picking up right where we left off before my camera ran out of battery. So here we go. We were about halfway done with the footsteps. Actually, we only have two more left, so we're just gonna jump right back in. We're gonna finish those up. So what I ran into was I actually wanted to layer mix and match a couple footsteps to get a certain sound. For example, my first layer was this one. When it was coming up, it seemed a little empty, so I wanted to add a little more, and I still actually don't like it. I think I'm gonna add another sound. It seems very light. I think it should be actually even lighter. Now it doesn't sound heavy enough. Let me see without that. I, I like that actually it was just that first one so so the jump seems really crunchy right now but I'm okay with that I know I'm gonna come back and fix it anyway so the last layer I did was the swipe I really like the toe tap here in the beginning and then there were a couple of swipes that kind of swooped up but this one required four different layers so what I did was I opened up another track I right clicked and I renamed it to footstep underscore three four however many you need and that was footsteps so time to move on to the claw I'm using the SFX for my fighting SFX pack from trying digital and they have a couple cloth grabs that part right there that's what I'm looking for for after the base let's see what that sounds like so I'm actually going to solo only the cloth layers Ooh, super loud. I'm gonna bring that down to 15. All right, so that about does it for the cloth. We're actually not gonna need a lot of the cloth. The music and the rest of the sound effects and all atmosphere and ambience is really gonna take over. The cloth isn't gonna get as much work as we thought it was, but that's okay. Time to move on to props. So props start down here and it's time to play with the car effects. So let's do it. All right, so that does it for the props. That does it for the car sound. The car sound was a little tricky. Yeah, <laughs> It's a lot of mixing and mashing. I had to create two more layers just so I could mix and um, layer a couple of sounds to get it, but it's not supposed 
supposed to be pretty. It's just supposed to give you an idea of what you want to see. So the next thing we want to do is add cross dissolves to our audio clips. Now, the reason we put cross dissolves at the beginning is because when a new clip starts, it has an abrupt pitch. So what we want to do to smooth that out is put a cross dissolve on. All we're going to do is we're going to click and hit shift D. That's going to set a whole cross dissolve for us. But here's a trick. If we select everything and hit shift D, it'll, it'll put cross dissolves on all of them. And then all we have to do is trim the length of them. So we'll bring that one down. We'll go to the start of this, hit shift D again. And there we go. That one's done. Come to this one. Shift D, bring that one down. Awesome. So go ahead and put one frame cross dissolves on all of your clips and I will see you when this is done. And awesome. So we have cross dissolves on every single audio clip. And that kind of does it for our sound effects process. Now I know nothing's perfect, but that's okay. We're doing a rough walkthrough of everything before we go back in and revise it. Now that we finished the sound effects and fully process, I'm going to solo everything except the music. Need the music awesome, and I'm gonna just watch it and see what it sounds like. Oof, now let's listen to it with music. All right, we lose the music at the end just because it's too soft and that'll all get changed in the mix. But regardless, congratulations. That does it for the SFX and fully processed.